a little lower on this thing. Okay. You know that song, Silent Night, it makes me think about, uh, you know, when Christ was born, it was indeed a silent time. And when Christ was born, it was very quiet. But you need to know that when he comes the next time, Come on. every eye yep. is going to see him. Amen. And he is not coming quietly. Amen. Amen. That's why it's very important for us to know the truth about God Amen. and to have truth in our hearts. Amen. Because the truth is what sets us free. The truth gives us power. Right. And we just had a revival this fall and we talked about the truth. Amen. And what I want to talk about this morning is in with truth. All right. And it's about David's prayer because David found out the truth about himself. He, he realized that he had committed a sin. Mm -hmm. And so David's prayer is in Psalm 51. And that's what we want to look at this morning. David's prayer. You know, Psalm 41 is one of the most eminent of the Psalms, and it is the most expressive of the care and the desire of a representing sinner. <clears throat> David, he confessed his sin, and here's how he prayed. He prayed for peace of conscience, mm -hmm. prayed for grace to go and sin no more. And the sin that he expressed sorrow for was for folly and wickedness that he had committed with his neighbor's wife. Mm -hmm. The sin of David, it is also recorded as a warning for all of us that he who thinks he stands needs to take heed lest he falls. Mm -hmm. And he traces his backsliding back to his outward rituals and his lack of inward sincerity. Because right. see, we have to be sincere inside. That's right. And so he traces it back to his inward and his lack of inward security. He realized that God desired truth in the heart and not just lip service. Right. And God wants us to be truthful with him. Right. You know, and he wants it from here, not just lip service out there. In Isaiah 29, 13, it says, Wherefore the Lord says, For as much as this people have drawn near with me with their mouths and with their lips, do honor me, but have removed their heart Amen. far from me, and their fear towards me, is taught by men's the precept of me. So what is the Lord saying here this morning? He is saying that there are many of us whose relig religious is lip service only. We have no action. No action whatsoever. And it's only from the teeth out. And they do not apply <coughs> their minds to the service. They do not make the word of the Lord the rule of their worship, nor his will their reason. Mm -hmm. Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by me. David's prayer reveals that he saw the terribleness of his sin mm -hmm. as he had never realized it before. So this morning we're going to look at this prayer of David in Psalms 51. Begin with verse 1, it says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercy, blot out my transgressions. He pleads here for mercy. He says, Have mercy on me, God, have mercy on me for mercy's sake. Blot out my transgressions. 
as a dead is blotted out, as a dead is blotted out or crossed out of the books when either the debtor has paid it or the creditor has remitted it. It goes on to say, wash me from all my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. That's something we're all looking forward to and that's what we all need. Amen. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. David said, I know my transgressions. And he had found out, they had found out to be the only way of easing his conscience was to recognize his transgression. See, we have to recognize when we are wrong when we transgress against the Lord. Amen. So many of us don't know that. He went on and he had such a deep sense of his sins that he was continually thinking of it with sorrow and shame. See, when we sin against the Lord, that's nothing for us to feel joy about. Amen. We should feel sorrow and shame just as David did. Yes. All right. Verse 4 tells us, Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Mm -hmm. See, the best man or the best woman, if we sin against God, we should give our best example of repentance. All right. David went on to publish his confession of sin so that when hereafter he should come into trouble, none might think that none might think that God had done him any wrong. Because sometimes, you know, when things happen to us, we want to say God has done this to us. He's done something wrong for us. But all the things that go wrong with us, it's our own fault. He says that for he confessed that the Lord is righteous. Thus will all those who truly repented justify God by condemning themselves. Verse 5 says, Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, <coughs> and in sin did my mother conceive me. Verse 6 Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part, and in the hidden parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. You want wisdom? You want to know the truth? Go to God's word. Amen. He will teach you wisdom, and he will teach you truth. Not only do you go to his word, but fall down on your knees and pray and ask the Lord, to forgive you for your transgressions. And he will give you the wisdom and he will forgive you if you are sincere. See, David, David's acknowledgement of the grace of God, both his goodwill towards us and his good works in us, he said that you would teach us and you would teach us wisdom in the animal's part. See, truth and wisdom will go very far towards making a man or woman a good person. Amen. What God requires of us himself, he will work it in us. And he will work it in the regular way, enlightening our minds and so gaining the will. David was conscious of the uprightness of his heart towards God. And in his repentance, he said, therefore, he had no doubt but that God would accept him. He hoped that God would make him able and enable him to make good his righteousness and his resolution. And in his hidden parts, and in the new man he called, the, was the inner parts. 1 Peter 3, 4. He would teach him wisdom so to discern and avoid the schemes of the tempter another time. You know, the tempter will come around you and try to tempt us in many, many ways. Yes, he can make it just as sweet as you want it. Yes, 
And if you're not very careful, he can tempt us to fall right into his trap. Verse 7, David goes on to say, Purge me with hyssop, and I will be cleansed. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And that's what we want to do. That's what we all want. We want the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness and make us white as snow. See, because the Bible makes it abundantly clear that God insists on sincerity. He insists on sincerity, not superficial truthfulness. Not superficial truthfulness at all. See, we all look like we're full of the truth out here this morning. All right. well, we all look good sitting out here like we're full of the truth this morning. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> but God knows the difference. Amen. Amen. In the inward parts, and we have an example here in 2 Kings 23. David says, I beseech thee, O Lord. No, this is Hezekiah, I'm sorry. He says, I beseech thee, O Lord. Remember, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Hezekiah's statement, when we judge this statement, we must think of the times when he said that. Because see, in our present day, in our present day and age of spiritual enlightenment, it's generally not thought proper for a man to present his goodnesses as the basis of God's favor. Because the Bible says that all of our goodness is like what? It's like filthy rag. Man's endeavor comes so woefully short of meeting the divine standards that the supplanter is urged to place his trust in the merits wholly outside of himself. Nevertheless, it is proper, having all of our powers to comply with the conditions to prevent the, present the promise of God as the <coughs> basis of our confidence. See, we must have confidence, you know, in our belief. If you don't have confidence in what you believe in, you might as well not have any belief at all. Amen. Outward appearances and inward corruption was the mark of the spiritual leaders of the Jews in the days of the Son of Man. If you would look with me over in Matthew 23, chapter 23, verse 25 through 28. Chapter 23, verses 25 through 28. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortions and excess. Verse 26. The blind Pharisees cleanses first that which is in the cup and in the platter, that the outside may be cleansed also. So we have to clean the inside of ourselves first. You know, we might look good on the outside, but he wants us to cleanse our heart inside first. Because see, if we look all good on the outside, and our inside is just as dirty as it want to be, the Lord is not going to be satisfied with that. He's going to say, Where woe unto you scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, or ye are likened unto a white acceptable, which indeed appears beautiful outwardly, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. Verse 28 says, Even so, ye also outwardly appears righteousness unto man, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. See, this is one of the greatest sins of the last days. You know, we all profess to be Christians in the last days. But 
is our heart true? Are we really being truthful with God and are we being truthful with ourselves? Because in the last days, it's all going to come out in the water you know, when Jesus comes. But 2 Timothy tells us something here. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, he tells us something. He says, Know this also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Dangerous time. I believe we're living in those times already. Amen. That's why we have a man sitting right out in front of the door. Because Amen. people are just going, losing their mind. Coming in, shooting up churches. We shoot up schools. They even go so far as to go in the hospitals now. So we're living in peerless times now. It says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents. So many young children today are disobedient to their parents. You know, their parents tell them one thing, and they, they figure they're grown and they're going to do what they want to do and not Amen. listen to their parents. This is in the last days. And we see it all the time. All you got to do is walk over there to Walmart. <laughs> when they're shopping, and I'm not talking about teenage children. Those little bitty babies in those carts, mom telling them to do something, you can hear them saying no. Mm -hmm. And if the mom don't give them their way, they have the biggest fit. You can hear them out of the whole store. Not wanting to do what the parents said, but they want to have their way. It says in the last days, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, Incontentous, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power therein, from such he tells us to turn away. This is a long, long list here. You know, this is what's happening in the last day. That's why it's important for us to be truthful, to have truth in our hearts. Because, see, the effects of insecurity makes one's attitude in life hypocritical. Matthew 6, 5 says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street that they may be heard men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. They already have it. The sad part of it all for God's people today is that there is so much of this superficialness going on inside the church today. Revelation 3, 14, 7 and 1. Listen to what it says. Unto the angel of the church of Laodicea. And we are the church of Laodicea. Amen. Mm -hmm. Unto the angel of the church of Laodicea writes, These things says the Amen. Here's what it says. To the church of the Laodicea, here's what it says. I know thy work, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Some transitions say vomit. You know, when when a person vomits something up, mm -hmm. it's got to be pretty bad. Mm -hmm. So if God is going to vomit up out of, out of his mouth, that's pretty bad in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. It says, because thou, thou says I'm rich and increased in goods and need of nothing, and know not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. 
See, we've come a long ways now in, in this world than we were back in the day. We all have nice cars to drive to church. We have nice clothes to put on our backs, you know, and we have a little, couple of dollars or so. And we're sitting here, our air conditioning works, our heater works when it gets cold. So we are fine. We think we're fine, but the Lord says that we are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. That's the church of Laodicea, just that we claim. Truth in the inventory, brothers and sisters, is a must. If, a, if the human nature is to be changed, we need to clean first that which is inside of the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be cleansed also. Right. <clears throat> Matthew 23, 26 says, Within ye are full of hypocrisy. And Matthew 23, 20, 23, 28 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit in me. And back to Psalm 51, David prays. He prays for a sanctifying grace. His great concern is to get his corrupt nature changed. And therefore he prays, create a pure heart in me, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. In other words, repair the decay of spiritual strength. Renew a conscious spirit within me. The Lord says, Lord, secure me for the time to come that I may never in like manner depart from you. Because it's a bad thing if you depart from the Lord. Yes. And we should be praying this prayer that David is praying <coughs> to clean us up Put a pure heart in us. Renew a right spirit in us, a steadfast spirit. And pray that we should never depart from him. Said so the human heart is so totally deprived and corrupt. Jeremiah 3, 17, 9 tells us that. That's what it says. The heart is deceitful. Above all things. How many things? Oh. Above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? When he said, who can know it? Think about that. What that means? Who can know it? We should know it. But he says, who can know it? See, because there's a wickedness in our hearts which we ourselves are not aware of. And we don't even suspect it to be there. That's right. That condition affects the whole being. And Paul, see, Paul made this discovery in his own life that sin in the inward parts made his whole life wretched and unreliable. Therefore, it is essential for inward truth. You have to be true on the inside. And the essentials for inward truth is the total removal of sin from the heart. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. Don't we want him to put that in us? Amen. It says, I will take away the stony heart of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. See, because you must be born again. Amen. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So you must be born again. You know, we have these candidates today for baptism. They have made that choice. Amen. To go down in the water and come up a new person. To live for Jesus. Amen. And that's what we all should be striving for. See, the Holy Spirit must have control of our thoughts, Amen. our words, and all of our actions. So long as Satan has control of our lives, we are bond servants of sin. Romans 16 says, Know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are, 
whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So the choice that is ours. We have a choice to obey or we have a choice to, to, to disobey. But you're going to have to pay. I believe that this is the same. When you offer yourself to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey. Right. But when the Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts, brothers and sisters, by faith, a transformation takes place. Right. He will make the word of God a transforming power in our soul. He says, you should know the truth. And the truth should make you free. Amen. Don't you want to be free this morning? Amen. Amen. You have to know the truth. Amen. You have to know the truth to be free. John 8, 32 says, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And Zechariah 4, 6 says, The change within our lives, it is a work of lifetime. And I just want to say it because they make that stand today to come and get baptized. That doesn't mean that it's over with. That's right. The work just began. Amen. Because anytime you confess and make a commitment to stand for Jesus, that's when the devil gets really busy. Amen. He doesn't mind as long as you stand back, don't have no commitments, none of that stuff, coming to church. You know, just sitting back, relax. That's okay. But make a stand for Jesus. That's right. And that's when the work begins in your life. Amen. So I want to say that to those Amen. that are getting baptized. Your work has just begun. Right. But you must stay faithful. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit lead in your life. Amen. And be willing to listen to the Holy Spirit and make the changes that the Holy Spirit puts in your heart. Amen. Because see, Jesus wants all of our hearts. He doesn't want part of our hearts. You can't serve God with one foot over here and one foot over here. It's all that he's in that. Paul says that I die daily. 1 Corinthians 15.31 writes God's messenger. The work of sanctification is the work of a life Time. Paul admonishes, having died for these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh mm. and spirit, perfecting in holiness in the fear of God. And I'm getting ready to close it down. Paul freely acknowledged that he had not obtained a state of perfection. But that he has forgot the past and continued to strive for the more set before him. You know, we have to forget the past to wait until you used to live. Amen. We should forget that and move forward. That's right. We can't live that way anymore if we're giving Amen. ourselves to God. And that's why they're getting baptized today. They don't want to live that way anymore. They want to give their heart to God and forget the past and strive for the more that is set for them. Because see, God has a plan. <clears throat> he has a plan for all of us. Yes, he does. But we have to be willing and obedient and accept the gift that he has for you. Amen. Truly, David sought to change he saw the change of heart in his deep sorrow over his sin. But now I have a question for us this morning. Can we be less concerned about our end of life? That's something for us to think about. Is it possible that we are deceived having a form of godliness? Mercy, mercy. Right. Yet knowing that within us there is a void of truthfulness. truthfulness. See, we have to be sure, brothers and sisters. Amen. God is winding down 
this plan. Right. And he is soon to come. We all heard all those things that the Bible said in 2 Timothy. How the world is today. But he calls us out to be a peculiar people. So that when people can see us, they can know that there is something different in us. Amen. They can know that we are God's children. That's what he wants to be in these last days. He wants us to go out and tell people about him. Let people know that Jesus is alive and he is still saving people to death. Amen. That's what we need to know and that's what we need to spread out there. So I say to us again this morning, the question is, are we being deceived this morning, having a form of truthness? <coughs> That's something we have to think about. Are we being deceived? So go home and think about that today. Because God is real. You know, we're not just here playing in church. We're here serving the living God. Amen. And Satan, you know his time is short. He is trying his best to deceive us and make us fall short of the glory of God. We all want to be in that number Amen. when he comes in the clouds. We all want to hear him coming and not run and hide and try to have the rocks fall on us. Don't y'all want to be in that number? Amen. 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 So just remember, truth is power, and the truth will set us all free. Amen. 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 Now we're going to take a break. We have a baptism today. We're going to ask our candidates to go and get ready. And all of us that are taking part.